there are certain things you just do not do. For example, you do not tug on Superman's cape. You do not spit into the wind. You don't pull a mask off that old Lone Ranger. And you don't mess around with the Task Manager user interface. And that's why change has been so slow in coming to Task Manager, especially dark mode. That window's so bright, you gotta wear shades. That is until 6 a.m. today, when Microsoft officially lifted the embargo on Task Manager's dark mode news. It turns out that there's a new sheriff in town, and as a result, the new Windows Task Manager is not only sporting dark mode, but also the first major UI overhaul since I wrote the original almost 30 years ago. And as a bonus, it looks like we're getting dark mode in Notepad as well. From XAML themes to a new tab UI, I've partnered with Microsoft to bring you an exclusive first look at the new Windows Task Manager. We'll spin it up on the old 64 core thread ripper and put it through its paces to check out all the changes. All that plus psychedelic task manager and the best task manager memes all coming up next, right here on Dave's Garage. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft, the original author of Windows Task Manager, and I've got some big task manager news. It's also exclusive to Dave's Garage. Because when Microsoft wanted to announce the latest major improvements to my favorite 90s love child, they had to decide how they could reach the most ardent Task Manager fans. Now who on YouTube would have a large set of viewers that share a common love for all things Task Manager? Linus? Jay-Z Two Cents? Well, perhaps. They certainly have large audiences with lots of eyeballs, but Microsoft knows that if Task Manager has an unofficial home anywhere on YouTube, it's with us here on this channel. And my subscribers are precisely the types of folks that they want to reach. There's even a Task Manager Discord channel that you can join by clicking on the link in the video description where you can correspond directly with the developers and designers on the Task Manager team at Microsoft, share your feedback, and get your questions answered. And so, Microsoft approached me about doing an exclusive preview of the new Task Manager, and I agreed with no preconditions other than I had to wait until today to release the news. To be clear though, this isn't a sponsored video, and the opinions entered are completely my own. Microsoft didn't have any input into what I have to say today, nor did I have to get any kind of approval. And they're not going to like everything I have to say, unfortunately, though my complaints are mostly minor and can be fixed before release. It seems every few years the designers in Redmond will make major changes to the Windows user interface. It'll be Glass one year, Chrome the next, then Pastel, and so on. I've seen it all in my 25 so years of doing this. One year 3D depth and shadows are all the rage, and then suddenly someone shocks you with some purely flat UI. Fashions change, colors come and go, true to its name, transparency appears and then largely disappears. Corners are square and then one day they're round. But there's one constant when it comes to Windows. And that is, as I said, you just don't mess with Task Manager. Oh sure, Task Manager will dress in the style of the day to the extent that it uses standard Windows controls like buttons and lists and checkboxes. If the default appearance of those controls changes, then Task Manager inherits those changes as well but actual changes to Task Manager's core UI are rare. There were some major improvements made to Task Manager at a few points. Notably, upgrades to Task Manager are one of the few good things to come out of Windows 8. But even so, it still used the same old property page style interface with a tab control across the top. And who would dare change that now, almost 30 years later? Well, Microsoft would. But is it a change for the better or just a change for change's sake? Well, let's find out. Task Manager holds a special place in the hearts and minds of many users because it is Task Manager that rides to the rescue whenever it is, whatever it is that you're working on malfunctions. Program crashed? Task Manager. Program not responding? Task Manager. Oh well, sure, Process Monitor has more knobs for the nerds, but if you're just trying to get on with your real job or better yet start a game, it's Task Manager that you want. I wrote the original very carefully and with an eye towards reliability and dependability, and because the developers that have come after me have maintained that vision, you can always rely on it being there for you. As a developer at Microsoft, you don't want to be the developer that broke Task Manager. And for that reason, changes to the Task Manager are usually made slowly, carefully, and methodically. You can't just slap your favorite skin on and start adding plugins to it like it's your playing with Winamp 20 years ago. It's time to have a look at the new Windows Task Manager. So without further ado, allow me to switch to my Windows 11 desktop where I've got a pre-release copy of the new Windows Task Manager. The first thing I'm going to do is launch a copy of Notepad to confirm that we're still in light mode. And sure enough, it's time for the sunglasses again, I guess. If I launch the new Task Manager right on top of Notepad, it also comes up again in light mode because that's what my system is set to do for now. But right away, we can see the entire navigation design is completely different. 
Gone are my venerable tabs across the top that allowed you to cycle through the pages, like tasks and processes and details, as was the style of the day. Those selections have now been moved to a menu bar on the left hand side known as a navigation bar so that the UI is consistent with the rest of Windows 11, such as the new control panel. A lesser man would leave the thing in light mode and make you wait until the end of the episode for the big reveal, but that's not how I roll here in Dave's Garage. So let's switch the system to dark mode and see how the new task manager reacts right now. I'll go into the control panel and change the switch from light to dark and we'll see what happens. I'll also set my color scheme to Windows Dark so that everything is reasonably consistent. And I'm going to set my accent color to dark blue to see if that cascades through it all. As soon as we turn on dark mode and close the settings window, we're there. Task manager in dark mode, finally. It looks great and I can finally lose the shades. I'd say 90% or more of Task Manager is made up of standard Windows controls, where they inherited dark mode largely for free as those system controls got it, but there were likely a number of challenges in getting the rest of the controls, like the graphs and charts, to render properly in a dark mode environment. Back in 94, I was a big fan of phosphorescent green on a black background, and I'm pretty sure that was hard coded. But rather than just hard code a new palette for dark mode, they took on the big work item of making Task Manager's rendering fully modern, using XAML and so on. That was a substantial change for the app and explains in part why we've had to wait so long for Task Manager Dark Mode. What is XAML? Well, other than the obvious notion that it's an XML based way to specify UI declaratively, it's only been around for about 16 years, so I'm still waiting to see if it catches on before I learn it. Speaking of picking up free behavior when the standard system controls are updated, check this out Dark Mode Notepad. You see, Notepad isn't really much of an application, it's a frame window, menu bar, and edit control. They added some printing support and search and replace, but otherwise it's mostly just an edit control stuck in a big window that lets you save and load its contents. So when the folks at Redmond added dark mode support for the edit control, which must have happened sometime between Windows 11 RTM and Insider Build 22543, Notepad gained a sexy new look largely for free. Or so I assume. If some dude or dudette spent six months fixing dark mode issues in Notepad, my apologies and condolences. Maybe it just seems easy. Maybe you had to rewrite it in XAML. As you can tell, I just really like to say XAML, so for more information on XAML, Google the keyword XAML. Now, back to Task Manager, besides the color scheme, the big change is in the navigation and command bars. I think it's pretty clear these changes were made to drag Task Manager clicking and streaming into the 21st century, and that it now looks like other Windows 11 components. It makes for a much more consistent user experience. I'll let you in on a little secret though. So far, I'm not a huge fan of the navigation bar as a control. It's great when you have more than a half a dozen items, as a property page actually gets fairly ugly and complex with too many tabs. Plus, a navigation control can expose searching within the tabs and so on. But when you only have a few items, as Task Manager does, well, it sort of wastes a lot of space. All the space below the Services tab is just open white space. If you look at the Tab Style Task Manager, there's no wasted space. And that was a function of the reality that I was working on a machine that was at best 1024 by 768 in resolution at the time, so every pixel was sacred. In the modern world of 4K monitors and retinal laptops, this is less of a concern, however. Further, it's vertical real estate in particular that is the most precious, because our monitors are generally much wider than they are tall. So in that sense, the navigation bar actually saves vertical space by getting rid of the tab control and the page frames. You can collapse the tabs into just their icons by clicking on the navigation bar in the main icon. When you do that, everything collapses back to just icons. Now, it'll take me a couple days to remember which icon is which page, but pretty soon it will seem natural, I'm sure. And so because it gains vertical space, can be collapsed, and is consistent with the rest of the UI, I think I like it. But I reserve final judgment until I know whether you can navigate amongst the tabs with the keyboard somehow. The team was very clear that this is an early preview and that there are a number of things to be fixed yet, so you can't really fairly judge the finer points like that yet, and so I won't. But if it ships without control tab cycling, then I'd be bummed. One of the challenges of being a UI designer is conveying information in tiny icons. Take the services page, for example. The icon for it is a little tiny puzzle piece. I would have initially assumed the double gear icon, which is what we see as the generic icon for services in its lists. The problem there, I assume, is that a single gear icon is already meaning settings, and so a little double gear icon may not be different enough. Such is the life of an icon designer working on a 16x16 16 16 pixel icon with a rich palette of two colors. There's only so much they can do. A minor complaint here is that when I mouse over one of the tab icons, it pops up a tooltip to describe the tab. I fail to see the utility when it contains only a single word, the name of the tab you're already looking at. Or perhaps not looking at. 
my best guess is that it's a convenience item for screen readers because if it's not needed for that, I would disable the tooltips entirely when the bar is expanded. It makes a modicum of sense if I collapse the navigation bar, but that leads me to another minor complaint. If I mouse over an item, that tooltip comes up over top the navigation link right above it and the tooltip is persistent and prevents me from clicking on the next item in the list, which is kind of annoying. If it came up a little bit to the side, it would solve itself. So like XPOS plus equals get text metrics magic EX2 uh, for processes and then take the TM width field and add that to your, yeah, you can work it out. <laughs> Next to the navigation bar, the biggest structural change is the move from menus to a command bar for the verbs. I was about to riff on the thing for not exposing all the verbs like end process tree that used to be on the menu bar. And yet the thing is, if you go back and run the standard Windows 11 task manager, it's clear that those things are not exposed there, nor in my original version for that matter. There probably should have been a process menu visible when you were on the processes page, for example. It should have contained all the process specific verbs and menu entries. But because it's always been dependent on you knowing how to use the context menu, it's by no means a regression. And in fact, by removing what I would call an incomplete menuing system, they've actually done the app a favor of sorts. So in that sense, it's an improvement. Since I'm making a big deal out of keyboard access today, I should also note that you can easily bring up the right-click context menu for any item in any list simply by pressing Shift F10. Then you can use the keyboard to select a menu item, all without ever having to reach for the mouse. And speaking of the mouse, you might have noticed that in Windows 10, they removed Task Manager from the right-click menu of the system tray. If this has been causing you grief, you can still access it by right-clicking on the Start button. I suppose I should call it the Windows button, since it probably hasn't said Start in a long time. Ooh, there's some trivia. I'm the guy who wrote the code to draw the text for Windows sideways in the start menu using a rotated device context, or however we did it back in the olden days. It had been a bitmap in Windows 95, but NT supported drawing text sideways, so I rewrote it to draw the text programmatically. That avoided the need to localize things like Windows 2000 Professional into dozens of different bitmaps for all the various languages. I suppose this command bar is all well and good for verbs, but what about the menu items for changing update speed and so on? Well, that has all moved to a settings page, accessible from the navigation bar. It seems some of them are not fully working yet, so I'm not going to play around with them right now, but it shows you the intent of where you'd find any such adjustments. Otherwise, there's not much to see here, so let's move along. A completely new feature seems to be efficiency mode, where you can click a button to move a process into what is being called efficiency mode. I don't have any specific details on what that actually means, but here's my best guess. Let's say you have a greedy process that wants to use 100% of the CPU and a lot of RAM. You have more important work that needs 5% of the CPU. Even if you mark that work as higher priority, it just means your work will run first and then 95% of the time the low priority work will run. But what if for some reason, such as battery life perhaps, you just don't want a background process chewing up 95% of your CPU and a bunch of your RAM? Then you can switch it to efficiency mode, which will throttle the process and limit the amount of resources that it's able to consume to less than are actually available. Again, my guess only. Google it when it's out. On the processes tab, they've changed the icon for suspended UWP processes from something that might have been a leaf, I'm not sure, to a pause icon. My only concern there is it sort of implied to me at least that I could then click on the pause icon to pause or unpause it, which is not the case. It's strictly a visual indicator. As far as I understand it, a suspended UWP app is like an iPhone app that's been dismissed to the background. It's essentially frozen until something really noteworthy happens so that it doesn't consume CPU and as many other resources. The more I look at the color scheme of the processes page though, I find that hard to love, but if I squint, the colors could pass for shades of amber on an amber monitor. I have an amber VT220 here in my office, so I am partial to that color scheme. But let me try to adjust the colors of the process page to something a little more palatable pun intended. Now, I realize everyone has an opinion on what the color should be, but mine's a YouTube opinion, so you know. No, I'm kidding. When I change it, I'm going to change it all to green phosphor later, and you'll see why they didn't let me make any aesthetic UI decisions. I'm going to launch Prime95, so there's some demand for resources on the machine, and then I'm going to step through the pages of the performance tab so you can see the color schemes under dark mode. Starting with the CPU page, it's attractive enough, but I have a bit of an objection here. Under light mode, the colors go from light to dark. Under dark mode, they still go from light to dark. I argue they should be reversed when in dark mode. Since the naming of dark mode itself effectively guarantees that this mode will always be darker than the other mode, it feels like it should be a safe bet, and I think it's like a one-line change. The memory page uses a purple color scheme, or maybe it's M for magenta or mauve and M for memory, who knows. And the only odd thing is the composition graph, really. 
Ideally, the different sections of the bar should have different colorization or pattern somehow. Maybe they will by ship, I'm not sure. And this perf is one of my favorites, and it's rendered in a color officially known as Blue Spruce. By me, that is, because I just named it that. I fully endorse Blue Spruce as the official color of this performance. And we're finally getting to the Ethernet page. I can't say I'm all that jazzed about the raspberries and cream coloring here, but I do like raspberries and cream, but where's the love for green phosphor, like I said? Here, check it out. Tell me green phosphor isn't epic in every way. It's the solution to all user interface problems. And speaking of pointless diversions, there are even task manager memes out there. Let's have a look at a few. The most famous ones stem from the frustration of something going wrong with a system such that task manager itself stops responding. Task manager window not responding is a scenario for the first meme where, ironically, he can save others from death, but not himself. <laughs> the normal case is when something else is not responding and you need task manager to help restore your system to sanity. Of course, in the event it doesn't work, then that means task manager has at that point effectively joined the ranks of the troublemakers, which prompts another meme. You were supposed to destroy them, not join them. That's <laughs> better if you've seen the movie, I'm sure. Or the ever popular, Earth just lost her best defender. We even have the guys from American Chopper in on the act for some reason. Of course, just like how your symptoms go away by the time you actually get in to see the doctor, many programs seem to spontaneously get better at the mere sight of Task Manager. And hence, why are you running? Naturally, Skype seems to be a common target. Now, here's the movie I have seen. Fear will keep them in line. These ladies make frequent appearances in the Task Manager memes. When your game hangs, then you immediately want to use Task Manager. And among my favorites, when you have to use a new instance of Task Manager to kill an unresponsive copy of existing Task Manager. If I had to pick a favorite, though, of course, I lean towards this one from Reddit for obvious reasons. Carefully now, he's a hero. It's good to be the king. Here's another request. In the original, when you held down F5, it would refresh as fast as it could. I love that. I can understand the reasons for throttling it, of course, but perhaps Shift F5 could be unthrottled? I want to see how fast my machine can scroll that graph in Task Manager. Be sure to check out my other videos from Why Are Blue Screens Blue and The Secret History of Task Manager to the Computer Language Drag Racing series where we compare the speeds of up to 60 different computer languages. If by chance you've never seen one of my videos before, I'd be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel, and that way I won't disappear never to be seen again. I'll also know that this is the type of content that attracts subscribers and I'll make more like it. Because as I like to say, I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please leave me one of each before you go today. Thanks for joining me here in the shop today, and in the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Or maybe it's just because there's been no dork mode. Dork mode? <laughs> Dork mode. Ah! Dork mode. This little chair will be waiting for one of you. And a rocking chair for another who likes to rock. And a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage. <laughs>